Hi, my name is Tina, and this is Knitting Blooms. You can find show notes for everything I talk about on my blog at www.knittingblooms.com. And if I miss a link, please feel free to contact me on Ravelry as Blooming Knitter. Or you can email me at knittingblooms at gmail.com. Come and join the Ravelry group so you can be eligible for all the prize drawings. And be sure to introduce yourself so that I can get to know you also. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter as Bloomy Knitter. And don't forget to click the like button on Facebook for Knitting Blooms. Have you seen the new Twisted Lights from Barmaids? Twisted Lights are the most incredible beeswax candle with a very long burn time. For example, the smaller of the Twisted Lights burns for approximately 20 hours. But that's not what sets it apart from other candles. Twisted Lights look exactly like small balls of yarn. They look so much like a ball of yarn, it almost looks like somebody took a ball of yarn and dipped it in wax. And just like balls of yarn, Twisted Lights comes in lots of amazing colors and they are 100% beeswax. Barmaids does not use any additives or hardeners in their candles, nor do they coat their molds with toxic mold release. You can get your Twisted Light candles at www.bar-maids.com. Hi everybody, thanks so much for joining me today. I am so happy that you have decided to spend your time with me. I am recording on Thursday, February 20th, and I'm not quite myself today, but I'm hoping that by sitting down and chatting with you guys, um, I'm able to get my mind off of some other things. So I'm not going to go into the other things because I know that I will lose it. So if you are interested in finding out, you can check the Ravelry board. Otherwise, I'm going to try and keep this upbeat. Um, a couple weeks ago, after I recorded last, I had thought about a topic for this episode. And it kind of still... Um, is relevant. And the topic is um, trying to find the, the, um, the positive in every situation. And it reminds me of a movie called Pollyanna. And it's an old Disney movie that is about a little girl who loses her parents and she has to go live with her old crotchety old aunt who kind of runs the town that they live in and everybody in the town is you know, a lot of the, a few people in the town are not, um, very nice people. And she goes around town spreading gladness. And a lot of times, um, people will, I guess I'm kind of getting back to why I'm thinking that this is a good topic. But a lot of times, people and podcasters and whatnot focus on, you know, the negative. When something doesn't go exactly the way that they want it to go and they rant about it and express their dissatisfaction with it and whatnot. But I personally think that the better way to go about things is to look at the positive. Not that what I'm going through right now is very positive, but I'm trying to get through it. Anyway, 
we are going to try and be Pollyanna this week. And hope for the best. So let's move on to some fun topics. <laughs> um, as you know, I have Knittopia coming up in a few weeks. And I am going to be extremely busy uh, with trying to get ready for Knittopia. And in the process of getting ready for Knittopia, my goal is to also produce some extra tutorials so that I can get those posted for you. Um, as you know, the last few weeks of tutorials have been um, learning to knit English and then learning to knit Continental. And those were very basic tutorials. And I have a few more things that I want to do kind of in that series. My next tutorial, which I think I'm going to be posting next week, is going to be kind of how I knit because I kind of knit a combination of um, English and Continental. So I'm going to show you the way that I typically knit um, in that tutorial. And then I'm going to follow that up with a tutorial about fixing some mistakes. Some basic mistakes like yarn overs that you know are not supposed to be there and drop stitches and whatnot. Just some very basic things um, that I think a lot of people probably would benefit from. Um, I'm also thinking about doing a tutorial with beads. Uh, because I am doing a shawl with beads right now, so I'm thinking about kind of incorporating um, a tutorial of how I use the beads uh, with that. I still want to do a Knit Companion tutorial, and I'm hoping that I can get that done in the next week or so, so that I can at least submit it to Knit Companion to see if they approve it for publishing. Um... I also have a couple other things on my list, like the braided, the braided cast on with the twine stitch, which is what we've been using a lot of for the um, the colorwork mittens. When uh, Valerie Woodworth, who we've been doing colorwork mittens for in the past, she does a lot of those on the edge of her her mittens, and so I thought I would do a tutorial for that. Um, and also, I might get a chance to do some close-up of a couple shelves in my stash. Um, like I have mentioned before, all of my stash is on Ravelry, so if you really want to go and look through it, you can do that. But I know a lot of people have asked just for a closer look at the shelves in my cabinets, so I might get to that. Like I said, I need to have at least two extra tutorials done before camp so I can post those and have those uploaded um, while I'm at camp, um, hopefully all will go well and I will be able to get those tutorials done and have that ready for, for before I leave. Um, also last week I mentioned about the, the donations to the podcast and the DVDs that I'm creating. I have already started creating DVDs. I do need to get a couple more supplies before I can start shipping them. Um, but I have already started um, creating some for the people that have um, made donations in the last two years. So I have contacted all of those people that had made a donation of $750 or more. And uh, a number of people have gotten back to me. A uh, few people want DVDs. A few people said this not necessary. They don't need a DVD. Um, they just appreciate what I've done with my podcast. So yeah, I'm, I am trying to get those out. I am trying to get the ones that contact me before Knittopia. I want to try and get those shipped before I leave if possible. Um, like I said, I need a couple more supplies for some labels and stuff like that, but, um, they have been started. Um, and I won't be putting up the, um, the DVD selection on, on Etsy until after Knittopia because I don't want to have to worry about any additional DVDs before Knittopia. I think it would be just too much to have to worry about with everything else that's going on, trying to get ready for Knittopia and other life issues. Um, I want to, 
I do want to take a uh, couple minutes and talk about barmaids. I haven't talked about barmaids in um, a while. I haven't actually talked about it. We have the commercials um, during the episode. But I wanted to just say a little bit about barmaids because I haven't talked about, about them for a while. And the last time that I made my purchase, I, I do need to make a new purchase and I need to do that pretty soon because I, I'm out of face pudding and I just have to have face pudding. Um, but the last time I, I placed an order, I ordered the body bar, but this time I ordered the vitamin rich vitamin, uh, body bar. Now, before I would just get the regular, the regular one, I'm like, well, I don't need, you know, vitamin rich. But I have to tell you that the vitamin rich body bar I have noticed a big difference in my skin. Now, seriously, I can't attribute it to anything else because pretty much everything else is has been the same. You know, my diet, my um, water consumption, whatnot. But for some reason, the Vitamin Rich Body Bar has made my skin smoother. I'm sure it has to do with the vitamins that are in it. And I did check out the site today. I had originally thought that the um, the Vitamin Rich Body Bar, um, Lolo Bar, was more expensive than the original version, version. But apparently it's not. So at least when I went to the website today, I didn't notice a price difference. So if you have not tried the Vitamin Rich uh, Body Bar, Definitely give that a try the next time you place your order and um, and see if that makes a difference for you as well. I did notice also that Barmates has a few new products. Um, they have something called a, um, some kind of a tray. I think it's just something that you can set your bar on, you know, that you don't have to keep putting it back in the tin, which is kind of nice um, if you like to keep it on your bathroom counter or whatnot. Um, what else did they have? I noticed some dryer balls. They might have been around for a while, and I just haven't really paid too much attention to them. Um, what else was there? There was a, I think they have a new, um, dispenser for the Southern Comfort and the Lolo Baby. Um, I didn't, I think it used to be in a bar, but now it's in like, um, kind of like a tube, sort of like the O oh, for Feet's sake. So go and check out their site and, and check out all the new stuff that they have on their site and uh, place an order because I know you will love their products. Everybody who has placed orders and has contacted me has said that they, they placed an order because they saw me talk about it on the show and they absolutely loved the product. And honestly, I think that you would love the product if you placed an order. If you have not tried Barmaids, please go over to their website, which is www.bar-maids.com, and place an order and try it, you know, because you will, you will definitely love it. Okay, so let's get into the knitting. Um, there has not been a ton of knitting. I mean, when you talk about two weeks, I mean, it's been two weeks since I recorded last, and when you think about two weeks' time, there hasn't been a ton of knitting, and it's mostly still because of Sims. I'm still highly addicted to Sims, uh, but I'm trying to limit myself. I've installed some additional mods from last time in the last two weeks. I installed mods before the last episode, and then I installed some more mods this last weekend. And now I have a mod that reminds me to save my game every 30 minutes. I can set the time. I can set it to every 30 minutes or 45 minutes or whatever. But I have it set to every 30 minutes and I'm trying to limit my playing time to, to no more than two hours a day. So when I, after my fourth save, I say, I, I have to be done. Um, but honestly, the last few days, I haven't even had two hours to play because it's been so busy at work. We are still swamped because of all the the um, snow and ice and ice dams and, and water leaking into people's houses and all of that. We're still so busy beca because of all that stuff that's going on. So today I didn't even pull out my computer at all. I think I knit maybe a row and a half on a pair of socks um, after lunch or right after lunch um, for a little bit. 
but really that's about it it's been so busy so not much sim time and not much knitting time the last couple of days but I do have a finished object and here it is it's not the ends aren't woven in yet but it is a hat for halos of hope it's just a simple watch cap and it is knit out of I don't know what yarn <laughs> Um, I want to say it's Plymouth Encore, but I don't know if that's right or not. It is a bulky yarn, and it's an acrylic yarn. Now, this yarn was actually a oatmeal color, and I dyed it. I wanted to see how, um, how the yarn would take the dye, because it does have, um, a bit of wool in it. I think it's 25% wool, 75% acrylic. But I wanted to see how it took the dye. And like I said, it was an oatmeal color. And it is a 75% um, um, acrylic yarn. So it did take the dye on the wool sections. On the wool part of the yarn. Uh, but it did not take it very vibrantly. I actually used a very vibrant red dye. And it is very kind of mauvish colored. So... Yeah, it didn't it didn't take the dye very brightly, but it did take the dye at some point. So if you have an acrylic yarn that's an, a light color, like a white or an oatmeal color that has some wool in it, um, you can dye it, but it will be a very muted color. And I did dye this a lot. I put a lot of dye in the bath. And I dyed it a few times thinking, okay, well, maybe if I did it again or put more dye in, it would get darker. It really didn't. It was the color that it was, and that was it. But this is, like I said, a simple watch cap um, hat. And I um, knit it for Halos of Hope because we are collecting hats for Halos of Hope as well as um, Mama's Boys at Knittopia. So I wanted to have a few hats um, to donate at the retreat. So that's one. Um, this particular hat is, or this yarn is a bulky yarn. So I can knit a hat in this yarn in probably six or seven hours. So it's not, it doesn't take that, mo that long for me to knit a hat in this yarn because it is bulky. I think I knit it on a size eight because um, I'm a, a fairly loose knitter. But it went pretty quick. I think I did it over a couple of days because, you know, it's kind of boring, but I can knit this also while I'm walking um, on my ball. So that's my one finished object for today. And I have some progress on some other projects too. I did want to mention that I did one square on my sock yarn blanket. Um, I just one morning, I just felt like doing something very simple and I didn't have a lot of time. So I just did a square. And I think I didn't even finish it that morning. I think I had to finish it that night. Um, so, yeah. But I did do one square. But that is one project that will be going with me to Knittopia. I'm hoping to finish an entire row. And I think I mentioned before that I'm only going to show that project when I finish a row of squares. Because it's such a slow process. And to, for me to show you one square at a time is just crazy. So I did finish one square, and I think I'm about halfway across the the row. So that'll be coming soon. Okay, so the next project, let's go with this one, because this is an easy one to show. These are my socks, my um, featherweight socks, because this is the yarn that I used for my featherweight cardigan. And I haven't made too much progress on them. I have that one, that much on that one, and I didn't even work on this one. I moved my marker up, that was it. Yeah, haven't been working on these too much. I haven't been spending a whole lot of time on my ball lately, so that's part of the reason. But just plain stocking at socks, no crazy stuff going on here. I'm still kind of disappointed about the color, but um, I think I mentioned last time that I think I might have enough for two pairs of socks, and between the four socks, I think I might be able to come up with two socks that are fairly close in color. So we're going to keep going on them and it is what it is. 
The next project is my um, Little Big Shrug. And I've made a decent amount of progress on this, um, considering I haven't knit too much. So there's my marker from, I moved it up last time, and I did a few repeats. Um, yeah, I think I worked on this at, um, on, at Knitting Guild meeting, and I got I, I, quite a bit done. I, I want to say that I got probably two or three repeats at Knitting Guild, um, and then I had worked on it a little bit prior to that as well, but then I haven't picked it up since. Um, but it's coming along. It's I got quite a ways to go. I have the whole length from my whole wingspan, so this is all I have so far, and that is a very small portion of my wingspan. So I want to say that it's like, um, I don't even know. I can't even tell you how many inches I have to go. I have a lot of, a lot of, um, inches to go on this, but it's coming along. I am, um, alternating the skeins and that is still going quite well for me. So that is the little big shrug. If you want to look at my project page, the next project is my uh, my shawl for my mom and this is the I called it the fall mystery shawl because that's what it was two years ago when I made it but it's it's actually um I don't know granita grinia I don't know it's g-r-a-n-i-a that's what the finished pattern is called. But last time I recorded, I was stopped because I needed to get beads. And sure enough, those beads did arrive the day I recorded. But I am not as far along as I wanted to be at this point. I had hoped to finish the first chart the weekend after I recorded the last podcast. That was two weeks ago. And then the the second chart the following week and the second chart and the third chart the following week after that, which would be this week. Um, so I would have hoped to have the third chart almost done by now so that I could finish the third chart by Sunday. I'm not even finished with the second chart yet. Um, it's been a crazy few weeks and I'm just not as far along as I'd like to be. But the beads are here. And you will see, I hope it's going to um, focus a bit for you. But I, ha the beads are, a, um, are actually a mix. In every other project that I've ever done beads with, I have only had one color of beads. But this one, I decided to do go with a mix. And I order all of my beads from the Bead Wrangler. And this is the, I believe it's the Gray Diamonds mix. And it's kind of cool because there's some um, beads that are um, like kind of like a matte, um, a matte finish. Hopefully that's going to uh, focus in. Are we going to focus, focus, focus? See how that one there is a matte kind of bead and then... This bead up here is a shiny bead. I just think that's kind of neat. So, yeah, it's coming along. I made a goal for myself to knit six rows a day this week. That hasn't happened either. <laughs> um, yeah, I had hoped to have this done by Knittopia so that I could block it there. I will be lucky if I can finish it at Knittopia. So, yeah, I'm still going to try and push through and try and get as much done as I can. But if I can't get it done, I am not going to dwell on it. I do want to have it done by the time um, Maryland Sheep and Wool comes around because uh, I'm going to Maryland Sheep and Wool and to visit my mother at the same time. And this is a shawl for her, so I would like to be able to give it to her when I am there. But if, I mean, that's still a number of months away. I think I can get it done by then. Because the last time I knit this, I knit it as the mystery shawl. And that's kind of what I wanted to do again. I wanted to knit it like the mystery shawl. Um, and I had, I knit it in a month. So I know it can be done. It's just 
setting my mind to it and doing it. But it is coming along and I am enjoying it. I really like, um, I went up a needle size. The last time I made this, I used a size four needle, but this time I used a size five and I really like it because this yarn is kind of, um, fuzzy because I believe it's alpaca and silk. And, um, I think it really needed the extra needle size to kind of open it up and let that alpaca shine through a little bit. And of course it will be, uh, blocked, which will make it look much nicer because right now, yeah, lace does not look all that great. So that is coming along and I can't really work on this um, when I need to be brain dead, which kind of has been a lot more lately than I would like. But um, I do like the fact that it's only beading every fourth row. So after I do a row of beading, I can feel like I can fly through three more rows after that and I feel like I'm making some, some headway. Um, and then there's a, a slow row with beading and then I can fly through three more rows. So I do try and do that. I try and, um, and do at least that. What I find is if I stop before a beaded row, then I can do a beaded row, three rows, a beaded row, and three more rows. And that will get me, you know, eight rows, which is really what I need to do. So I would only have to do two beaded rows a night and um, then I can still get quite a few rows done. But that's coming along and it will continue. And then I have my knit swirl. And I saved this one for last because I'm a ditz. <laughs> and honestly, I could have done this differently, but I wasn't extremely worried about it. But I am on the section where I'm increasing for my sleeves. And you will see, this is the edge where I was carrying up my yarn. And you will see that I have these big, big loops going up the side because when you cast on four or six or 10 stitches on a row and then come back and then switch yarns, you have quite a bit of way to go. Now, the reason I'm not too concerned about this is because this will be in the selvage and I can bury that extra little long loop. See that right there, that long loop? I can bury those loops in the selvage. But on my very last increase, the very last time that I had to do this, I thought of a way that would prevent that. And you'll see that on this last one, there's no loop. Before I lose my stitches. On this last one here, there's no loops here. And the reason is because I thought, oh, I should just trap the yarn around the other yarn as I'm increasing. Hello. Why didn't I think about this? One, two, three, four, four row repeats or four increases ago. You know, sometimes you just have to learn from your mistakes and that's what I did. Uh, but I am glad that I figured that out and hopefully I will remember that the next time I have to do an increase like that where I have to cast on a bunch of stitches and then carry my yarn up. Hopefully I will remember that. And it looks like, I'm not sure what this is. Apparently I did not do it this one because here's my yarn but I did it for this one. I, I thought about doing it here, but I forgot to do it here. <laughs> yeah, apparently I can't handle it. <laughs> anyway, these loops are going to be in the selvage, so I'm not too worried about it. It's not that big of a deal. I could have cut my yarn and, and reattached it, but honestly, I didn't want all those ends to weave in. So I just carried it. It's fine. It's it's not going to be a big deal. It's like I said, it's going to be in the selvage and not a big deal. Yeah, I didn't carry this one up. I'm not sure what I was thinking when I did this because this one has to come up here so I can use this the next one. So I've got 10 stitches here that anyway, I'm, I'm, I attribute it to the fact that my brain has not been, um, a hundred percent this week. 
so yeah so this one's coming along i am at my sleeves i have all my stitches on for my sleeves now so now i can start doing my arms um, i think the next row is where i start to mark off where my cuffs are going to be and whatnot so it's moving along again this is another project that i would like to have completed by the time I go to Knittopia because it'll be easier. I can block it there. I don't have to worry about cats, you know, laying on it and kneading in it and whatnot because we really don't have a big space where I can close the door and lock the cats out. So that is coming along. And like I said, with less than three weeks now till Knittopia, the likelihood of me finishing all the projects that I want to finish before then is unlikely but I will be at Knittopia for a week and a half so if I don't finish them before Knittopia hopefully I can finish some projects at Knittopia and still um, be able to get them blocked while I'm there as far as spinning goes I did finish um, plying all three braids of or all three skeins of the fiber nymph. I still have a bit left over on two bobbins up that I will split and then four ply that for my um, swatch. I'm hoping that I can get that done this weekend. My biggest thing is is trying to um, my biggest thing is trying to weigh weigh the bobbins and split it up once I get it split up and you know on four bobbins I'm more likely to ply it but I've been procrastinating doing that um, I actually procrastinated plying the the last bobbin I think I finally did that earlier this week or maybe I finished it on Sunday and I finally um, wound it off onto the nitty knotty the, the the second two skeins um, actually I think it was Tuesday or yesterday or something I don't even remember maybe it was Monday who knows <laughs> like I said my brain is not functioning on 100% right now um what's next I had promised you a book review for this week but with everything that's going on I have decided that I am not doing the book review I just don't feel like I can give a book review justice right now and I haven't watched other podcasts in quite a while so I'm sure that you've seen book reviews, um, these, some of these same book reviews from other podcasters. I am still going to give my spin on it, um, but maybe even having it a little further apart would not be such a bad thing because then, um, you know, you can hear about the book again and maybe be reminded, oh yeah, I wanted to buy that book. So I'm going to save that for next time. Um, I think I record, yeah, I think I record one more time before Knittopia. So hopefully I can get my act together and do it by then. We do have some drawings, the drawings that I forgot to do last time. I'm going to start with the colorwork mitten drawing. And um, actually I have my, um, here's my generator. All my numbers that I drew, I had three numbers that I drew, and the first number was if it's going to, <laughs> you don't need to see about Steve's wood turning. Um, so let's let it focus in there. Come on, come on, focus. Okay, so I have four num three numbers there, four, seven, and 18. The four is for the color work mittens, because I, now it's not focusing on me <laughs> okay so the four is for the color work mittens and the four is number four goes to for this is for the color work mittens and oh let me show you the prize first it's this project bag I did have the prizes picked out before I drew the numbers um, but I decided it is a uh, a knitting's my bag bag and it's penguins and because it is still snowing. We got a couple more inches again today. It is raining. It snowed a bunch this morning. We got a couple inches of snow this morning and then it started raining. Um, so it is just a sloppy mess outside right now. 
but because it's still winter and it's still snowing and I saw this in the bag, um, the, the uh, prize bag, I said, I'm just going to give this as a prize because I love Lois's bags and I know anybody who receives it will love it as well. So this is the prize. It's a small bag, but it, a small bag that is a really good size. Um, and that, like I said, goes to number four, which is mom of four, and that's Teresa. And the cool thing about this is that Teresa won one of the prizes from last year's Mitten Knit Along. And the two pairs of mittens that she knit this year were from the kit that she won last year. So I think that is really cool. So Teresa, get in contact with me and I will get this off in the mail to you um, as soon as possible. So congratulations on that. And then the spinuary. Um, the 17 and 18. And at first I was like, mm, those numbers are really close together. And then I thought, well, that's, that's the numbers. And if it was the same person that won, then I would choose another number. But they were two different people. So number 17 wins the bobbins up, which were donated by Archie Ware. Four, you actually are going to get four bobbins up. And those go to number 17, who is uh, Palette PC, and that's Bev. So, Bev, congratulations. You get to win the bobbins up. And if you don't have storage bobbins um, yet, you are going to love these bobbins. I absolutely love my bobbins up bobbins. And I can't see how I could ever live without them. Um, they are fantastic. And the second prize is um, this wonderful fluff that I purchased at um, Rhinebeck last year. And it is from um, Loop. It's not a bullseye bump, but it's the fluff. It's the cloud fluff. And I really liked this, um, this fiber. I mean, look, it's got this bright green. It's just fun. But... As you might have noticed, as I've done spinning in the past, I'm not finding that I like the bats and whatnot as much as the braids of fiber that are um, combed top. So I'm going to give this away to one lucky winner because I am sure that somebody else will love it way more than me and enjoy spinning it. I just, for some reason, I like it nice and smooth and... I have to have things in control. So, the winner of this is number 18, which is Rose Bob, and that's Rose. So, congratulations, Rose, for um, winning that fiber. Uh, you guys get in contact with me, and I will get your prizes in the mail. Thank you guys all so much for participating. I know there was a lot of um, last-minute entries, and I love that. I mean, I forgot to do the drawing last time so um you got a couple extra weeks to get those in there so i love that everybody was still trying to squeeze in at the last moment so those were the drawings for this week i want to remind you about knit your stash for 2014 remember that you need to get your stash loaded into ravelry by the end of march you still have a whole nother month to do it. I was actually going to start the knitting in March, but with Knittopia and everything that's going on, uh, it's just crazy to think about doing that. So you have till the end of March to get your stash into Ravelry. Now, if you don't have any of your stash in Ravelry, don't feel overwhelmed that you have to get everything in there, but think about what you might want to work on from your stash this year and at least get that posted and so that you can have that showing up in your stash. The knitting starts in March. You can have pre-started your projects. It doesn't have to start. Um, you don't have to have the project started after March 1st. You just have to finish it after March 1st. And it has to be in stash. I'm sorry. Back it up. <laughs> I have those notes in my to, for March 1st, but that's not what we're doing. Because <laughs> I changed it. It's April 1st. You have until the end of March to put your stash in Ravelry. The knitting starts April 1st. So you can have already started your project before April 1st, but it has to be finished and posted to the thread after April 1st. 
So get your stash and Ravelry through the end of March. Start knitting or what have you from stash um, for April. I will post a thread um, for finished objects for April, starting in April. So after April 1st, you can start posting finished objects from stash. Um, we will be having monthly drawings, probably from both the chatter and the finished object thread. And I'm not going to cut it off. I'm not going to cut off the finished object thread or the chatter thread. It's going to be a year-long thread. So if by the end of the year we have 600 or something posts in the thread, you will have a chance from every single post that you post in that thread. So get over, get start chatting about what you're going to work on, um, you know, what have you. Just start chatting it up. Tell, tell us how you're organizing your yarn so you can figure out what you're going to knit on this year. Um, yeah, tell us, post your, the projects that you're going to do, how you're going to get through your stash, what kind of, um, stash goals you have this year, all of that. Just start posting in that chatter thread. And then April 1st, when we post the finished objects, um, you can start posting your finished objects. So get ready to do that. And also, um, Tammy from the Proverbial Knitter podcast is doing a similar type of stash down type thing. So go and check out her podcast and see if you can double dip. I don't care if you double dip as long as she doesn't care if you double dip. Um, I'm pretty sure that she won't care, but just make sure that you know her, the rules of her, um, of her knit along. But, um, yeah, so that's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to knitting for my stash this year. Like I've mentioned before, I'm going to try and limit my, my purchases. I've done quite well this year. I did mention that I went to Knitting Guild meeting a couple weeks ago. It seems like a couple weeks. I think that was just last week. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I think it was just last week. Um, but yeah, I went to Knitting Guild and actually Twisted Fiber Arts was at the Knitting Guild meeting on um, that Tuesday. And I really wanted to buy yarn. I've had this one yarn on my wish list for quite some time. And I kind of walked away. And by Thursday, I was already contacting her to see if it was still available and to see if I could purchase it. I haven't heard back from her. I'm sure she's extremely busy as well. So, so far, I haven't purchased any yarn this year. <laughs> And I'm trying, I'm trying to keep control of it. I did want to keep my purchases to strictly to the events that I'll be um, attending this year. Um, Maryland Sheep and Wool and Zombie Knit Apocalypse. But I'm not ruling out that I won't buy yarn. I'm just trying to really think about my purchases before I purchase something and really um, search my stash before I say I need to go buy yarn. You know, so... Yeah, it's so far it's doing well. I think this is the longest I've ever gone without buying yarn. So that is a an accomplishment in itself. And like I said, I just hope I hope to keep it up um, this year as well. And I think that's all I've got for you this week. Thanks so much for joining me again. Um, sorry I got a little choked up there at the beginning, but um, I pulled it together. And um, I'm going to try and keep it together uh, for the next couple of weeks and so forth. Um, it's going to be a difficult time for me. And um, like I said, if you want more details or what have you, you can check the Ravelry board. Um, yeah, just, just check the Ravelry board. So I'm going to let you go, and I will talk to you again in two weeks. So bye for now. A long time in the making with outstanding results, Barmaids delivers yet another excellent skincare formula. Simple ingredients, quick absorption, it's a healthy skin choice. ICE Serum is the perfect daily, nightly eye treatment. With nourishing and protective antioxidants, this lightweight formula absorbs easily into the skin to deliver stunning results. ICE Serum is a powerful combination of natural ingredients which encourages skin regeneration, leads to tightening and toned skin due to astringent qualities, and contains potent antioxidants which help to slow down the visible signs of aging.